I'm moving too fast? Are you can be able to focus on me today, huh? I just need host stabilization, not post stabilization. Yeah, or sedatives maybe, hey? Or a collar and a leash. Whatever you're <laughs> into. <laughs> Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers, Chris Nichols here with another midweek short, this time an educational one. We want to focus on stabilization technologies and specifically today video based electronic image stabilizers. But you also have to understand how optical image stabilizers work as well. Hopefully after this video we'll have cleared that up for you. Okay, so if you're doing photographs, optical image stabilization is the only thing that's going to help you out, and it's great to have. When we hold a camera in our hands, our hands shake a little bit, creates that motion blur, and optical image stabilizers are great for trying to counteract that motion blur by shifting the inside of the lens or the sensor, and we all benefit from this technology. But a lot of the smaller cameras, smartphones, action cams, a lot of those are just saying we're going to get rid of optical stabilization and we're only going to use electronic image stabilization for video, and that's because on those smaller cameras, the results are fantastic fantastic and people are raving about it. However, what happens if you use electronic image stabilization on larger sensor cameras? Now in order to understand the strengths and weaknesses of an electronic image stabilizer, you have to have a basic idea of how it works. So electronic stabilization is applied either while the video is being created or afterwards in post with your video software. And basically what it does is it looks at the frames that you've recorded for your video, it sees how the camera has moved a little bit in between those frames crops everything in and realigns it. Now, this does give you a semblance of stability. I mean, that's the goal, but there are some things that it cannot fix. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is shutter speeds. And when we're doing creative cinematic video, we often like to use somewhat slower shutter speeds because if I'm holding the camera steady and my subject moves, they have a nice natural blur, but I don't want the whole frame being blurry. This is something that optical image stabilization really helps us out with, but electronic image stabilization cannot stabilize motion blur in any way, shape, or form. Now why this creates an issue is if I'm walking with the camera or the camera bounces and the whole frame is blurry, electronic image stabilizers won't get rid of that and I'm just going to get these weird blurry frames that I'm looking at. Now, why aren't people complaining about this on their smaller cameras and devices? Well, first off, most of those things are going to default to faster shutter speeds anyways. And that means that all of your frames are sharp whether things are moving or not. And then the stabilizer realigns everything electronically and it looks fine, but you're not getting that creative look of that slow shutter speed. If you watch our YouTube video about is Jordan out of touch, most people in today's day and age don't even really notice or complain about fast shutter speed looking video, only Jordan. Now the second issue that you're going to run into when you're shooting video is rolling shutter. We do talk about this quite a bit in our videos and you know it's basically where things that should be nice vertical lines become wobbly diagonals. You can see some examples of it here. Now it's important to understand this, larger sensors tend to have worse rolling shutters. Smaller sensors scan quicker, they tend to have much less problems with rolling shutter. Now, it's also important to understand that an optical image stabilizer will help smooth that rolling shutter out because it's preventing that shaking and moving of the camera and the sensor itself. It's great, but electronic image stabilization cannot stabilize rolling shutter. And where you're going to see issues here is if you're walking with the camera and you don't have an optical stabilizer and you're getting really bad rolling shutter, the electronic stabilizer is simply going to show that as very weird corners and very strange movement and it is intensely distracting. Now the last thing I want to talk about isn't really an issue or anything, but it's just something that's important to understand that's helping a lot of modern video cameras get more stable video. And that is that we're seeing a big push with devices like the new Apple iPhone, for example, now doing 4K 60p video. It's extra frames, higher frame rates. Classically, we like to shoot our show 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second, but now a lot of cameras are shooting 60 frames per second. Now when you move the camera, all of those extra frames mean that there's less camera movement in between each frame, and this makes it a lot easier for electronic stabilizers to have more information, uh, less cropping, and more stable, smooth video options. This really means that if you're using a small device with electronic image stabilization, you could very well be blown away by the smooth, professional, almost gimbal-like quality of the video, even though you're holding it in your hands, especially when you couple that with faster shutter speeds like we've talked about. Now the flip side of that is if you're going to shoot at more traditional frame rates or at slower shutter speeds because you want that more cinematic look, you might have to rely more on an optical stabilizer or something like a gimbal, sliders, tripods, glide cams, something like that because electronic image stabilization is not going to give you a smoother result.
So some of the things we want you to take away from this video, first off, optical image stabilization is a great technology and it does actively deal with a lot of the issues that we've been talking about today. In fact, if you have any camera movements and you have the option to use an optical stabilizer, we highly recommend it. Second thing I want you to take away from this is electronic image stabilization is a great tool, but the reason why it's getting so many accolades is because it's being used on smaller device cameras like action cams and smartphones. If you take, for example, a large cinema camera like the Canon and C500 Mark II, which does also have an electronic image stabilization system built into it, uh, you still are going to have issues with rolling shutter and with you know slow shutter speeds, and you're not going to get that same success rate that you're getting on your phone. Last thing I want you to remember is that electronic image stabilization can be applied in post afterwards on your video software. So whether you have it or don't, or use it now or apply it later, you're going to get a very similar result. In fact, often cases, your software and your computer will do an even better job of stabilizing that video electronically. And if you want to do some interesting movements with a compact camera at slower shutter speeds, at more cinematic frame rates, look at really incredibly stable platforms like the Olympus EM-1X. The best optical stabilization that we've seen so far, and you couple it with their built-in electronic image stabilizer, and you get a very solid result, especially if you're allergic to tripods and monopods. Hopefully you found that educational. Thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget, check out Instagram and Twitter. Please subscribe above uh, so you can watch more of our videos as they come out, and we will see you all very soon.